come back to this page. One week in the life of Jerina and I, as the Lord God Almighty stepped down into our living room and begun to take us on his journey of his thunder. The stewardship of giving this out to the body is still ahead. And today, if you have a camera on your phone, you might want to snap a picture of that up there, take it home and study it. But I promise you I cannot deliver this message. However, God the Father and I can. So Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. I look to you to help me give away what you have sent for your church in the earth in the end day. In Jesus' holy name, Lord God. I want to share with you just some points that came out of the first two weeks. First week, week and a half of God the Father visiting. Back in 2014, in February, we were in normal prayer. God the Father upped all the ante. You're seeing the notes from that time. Uh, these are the original notes. It begins on February 22nd, 2014. The Lord placed Jerina in an open vision, and this was the vision. We were praying. A book was opened over her head in heaven, and water was flowing out of that book. Now, let's just stop for a moment. There are books that God the Father is going to be revealing in the end day, in the end day run, in the end times. Now, they are not outside of Scripture. They are Scripture. But I want to give you the simple understanding of a book. Until a book is open, what is in the book is closed. Grasp that now. But when God the Father opens that book and pours what that book is, it hits this earth and it takes precedence and it takes dominion. Amen. And the church is in the midst of days when God's going to be opening and pouring. It's the same thing with a scroll. We've had scrolls given us and there's something written on the scroll. But the scroll literally becomes part of you. It goes inside of you. It comes out of you. And you become the vessel. The, you become the declarer of the scroll. The scroll comes alive inside of you. Now, how many of us want every book that God's got that he wants to pour and every scroll that he wants to unroll Amen. to be sent through us as vessels yes, in Jesus' Lord. holy name? I'm going to take you through bits and pieces. Every single jot tittle of this is a, a, it's a teaching of an hour in itself, and I have about 40 minutes to take you through a week. That week is sovereign. That move lasted over a year in our living room, just Jarena and I with the Lord. So I want you to think of 50 to 51 more of this today, just to get through the presentation. But I want to talk to you for a moment about a vision. In the end day, this whole message is about the end day. We're in it, by the way, and God the Father is sovereign and what the Lord is doing. And by the way, if you guys happen to decide to give me an offering today, I'm so blessed. Amen. And I'm not pulling for one. I'm just telling you it blesses me. So then, if you happen to weigh in your heart trust, you're either going to trust in things or you're going to trust in the Lord God Almighty. One of the two. You'll do one of the two. And you will get tested and you'll either pass or fail. Now, if you trust in things, you'll fail. If you trust in the Lord God Almighty, you will pass. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not... <coughs> The moment you begun to lean on your own understanding, you begun to trust in a thing. Let's go find out the plan of the Lord. This is the most difficult message just to break out into the open with because, number one, no one 
Doreen and I included, you guys included, all the earth included, every vessel out there of the Lord, every bond servant included, knows what the end day outpouring is going to be like. Amen. No one knows. We've never seen it. It's never came. It never had former or latter rain at one time. And there are scriptures that are going to be filled up. We've never had Zacharias top down oil on the candlelight removed, giving out the light of Jesus. Never had it. We've had Jesus revealed by Lord Holy Spirit in every jot, tittle, and iota of Scripture, but we've never had the candlelight removed. The candlelight removed shines to the table of his presence. The candlelight in the temple shines to the table of his presence, the shoe bread table, the table where God says, show me. If there's no value system for the presence of the Lord, now that covers a major level of denominationalism that is out there. There are four churches that are out there in the earth. I get to D.C. and God the Father whispers to me something and in the night he teaches me. The simple version of it is that there are four kinds of churches in every city. First there's the religious church and that is the church that has God in a box. Now I've had God in a box in times past. How about you? And I found out that he was bigger than the box, and I climbed out of the box with him and hung with him. Thank, thank the Lord I got out of the box that I had God in because he wasn't in there. That's the religious church. Now listen, I'm not talking about the non-born again church. That's out there too. All of these are born again. The religious church is born again. They just don't have a valid walk with God the Father. They don't know him because of that because everything is in a box. Then there's the pride church. The pride church has a level of comparison all the time to everything else. And I'm not doing that now. I'm trying to tell you that the pride church has a superior thought process that happens all the time. They believe in their superiorness. We know the Lord better. We can decree better than you. We can be apostolic better than you. We can be prophetic better than you. Okay, well, go for it. Enjoy. Enjoy. But that's the pride church in man that believes that he can do something better. I got news for all of us. Lord Holy Spirit's the only one who ever does anything. And if he's not doing it, God's not doing it. If Lord Holy Spirit's not doing it, God's not doing it. If Lord Holy Spirit's not opening your eyes in the spirit for you to see your imaginations at work. And it will go to its own stumblings because of it. So then the pride church. Now in the same token, if you're leaning on the Lord, if people were to ask me, what counsel would you give young prophets? It would be two things. Be pure and be holy. Well, that doesn't sound like very much counsel to me. It's the only counsel that will get you there. Without holiness, no man shall see God. The pure in heart shall see God. Want to see in the spirit? Those two. Pure, holy. So then, there's a third church that's out there, and that's the independent church. The independent church usually has some woundings down the line from somewhere. Now, I've been wounded in the house of God so many times, I've gotten used to it. How about you? Sheep bites are normal for pastors, and some pastors get abusive. It goes both ways. It's from both ends of the shotgun. Yeah. So then, there literally is an independent spirit out there that used this having to recover from a wound or a scrape or, a, a, you know, some kind of a fight or struggle. And sometimes it's bitternesses that have not been forgiven. And you're holding on to what you believe is the call of the Lord, and at the same time, there's all this stuff. Well, the independent spirit operates outside of the chain of command that comes down from the throne. That's the fascinating part about it. The independent spirit never quite gets authority right while trying to be an authority. And that church is out there. And then finally, oh Lord God, there is the humble church. Woo! -hoo! Lord God. 
That humble church knows it's not them. They know it is Jesus formed in them. They know every trial is just the Lord and Holy Spirit leading us to have Jesus formed more. They yield to the process. They have bought for the price. Their ear is pierced at his door. They know they cannot do a thing outside of him, and they lean on their Lord. Amen. And that is the church that God is going to use. They are the remnant. They are the bride. They are the army, and they're going to do exploits. Oh, my. Jareen and I get taken on exploits all the time. And that humility before the Lord is the key. So then, on February the 22nd, 2014, a book is opened and water is flowing out of the book. Now, this water does wonderful things because this water is part of the throne room flow out from under the throne and the throne room flow always contains the ways of God the Father. It always contains the will of God the Father. It always contains the direction of God the Father. And it always covenants with you personally. How many of us are covenanting with God personally every day? That's the key. So then as this water flowed... It begun to produce flowers. Now, what are flowers? How many, how, many, how many ladies enjoy flowers? How many husbands need to spank yourself because you haven't given your wife flowers in the last five years? <laughs> Mark Rose flowers for Stacy. He's cutting up with you. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. Flowers are the beauty realm of heaven, flowing out of this water of the word. The beauty realm of heaven is coming on God's calendar. In the midst of the move, we are going to literally taste holiness. We're going to see righteousness. We're going to behold the men of old. We're going to entertain angels. The beauty realm is coming. It's here now. We were down at the gate last Friday, which is two days ago. Is that it? Yes. And an angel as big as the building, silver, redemptive, redemption, was standing with us at the gate. Huge angel, all silver, redemption is coming to the city. What does God need to redeem out of Charleston, South Carolina? That is a long list. And the Lord's going to do it. He's going to redeem this thing. That doesn't mean that everybody's going to say, yes, sir. Some things are going to come up under judgment. It's time for us to be able to embrace the understanding that there are two hands to God the Father. The right hand is Jesus and the left hand is judgment. God the Father has both hands. So then as this book is washing over Jerina, it turns to gold, pure gold. And this river has been with Jerina and I in many a vision. There's a time when a golden river comes in a golden throne with a tree growing up and a branch growing up over the throne while our hands are there with an archway that grows. And this is all about the Melchizedek priesthood that is coming to be pronounced on the earth. Like the Sanhedrin's that are about to open up and say, we're the Sanhedrin. Guess what? The Melchizedek priesthood's about to open up and say, I'm a Melchizedek priest. And here's the, here's the miraculous. Here's the sign. Here's the wonder of God with me. The Lord is about to do what only he can do. So then, during this time, the very first scripture that was ever given was Ezekiel 10 and 11. Now, when I say that, take that with a grain of salt because the Lord had a build-up process, but this is when we started recording best we could hold on to. It's talking about four and living creatures moving as one unit of the Lord. They are cherubs. Each of them is a cherub. When they moved, they went in any of their four directions without turning as they went, but they followed in the direction which they faced without turning as they went. Actually, one of them is labeled a cherub. One is labeled a lion. 
One is labeled a man and one is labeled an eagle. And I just want to stop. I cannot, uh, if, if we were to stop and teach on the four living creatures, you would actually find that there are two sets of them. One is in Ezekiel and the other is in Revelation and there's a little difference in their function. There's a little difference in their face. So then, this is God quoting Ezekiel, and I want to take you through Ezekiel for a moment. First of all, the cherub has throne room command given to him, so he moves with authority. We are going to be given, when we function alongside the cherub for living creature, we are going to be functioning up under throne room command and throne room authority. By the way, all four and living creatures come to the earth when the earth is at, at, is at a turning point. When the earth is going to shift to a place that it will never be the same, that is the job of the four and living creatures. If you really understand scripture, you'll know that the four and living creatures forerun Lord, Holy Spirit in the outpour. The four and living creatures go where the Spirit is about to go. So they are the A-team of Lord Holy Spirit. I cannot begin to fathom how powerful that is. Amen. To be able to go ahead of Lord Holy Spirit, who is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, who is God with us in, in this earth, who will never leave us, never forsake us. He's our teacher, our guide, our comforter, our friend, our warlord of heaven. And he has a team and they are the four and living creatures. They are his, and they come off the wheel with a command, and they go shift the earth at a table place, an axis place, where the earth will never be the same again. I just want to describe one of those shifts that's happening right now. You see it, you might not recognize it, but it is the work of the four and living creatures. Our president is currently putting us on a path of staying beside Israel in the outpourings to come and staying loyal to the functions of scripture towards Israel no matter how bad it gets from other nations. We are on that course right now and we must not turn away from that course or we will perish as a nation. That is the work of the four and living creatures. So then, if you happen to hang with the man, the man creature. The man creature sees man for what man is and cannot be lied to. All the political realm that is getting shaken up by now in our own country is part of the work of the man creature. He's literally exposing all the politicians. Republican, Democrat does not matter. He's exposing everyone for who they are and what they are sowing, they are reaping. So if they move in a certain direction, that is the reaping process that comes out in the open. In truth, all of our politicians, Republican and Democrat, need to fall on their faces before the Lord and seek Jesus and know him. And that is coming to our nation. Oh my, what a turn. So then, the man creature knows man moves where man has judgment coming to him. That judgment is irreversible. Then there's the lion. Jesus intends to rule and reign with authority, and he's setting that up through the lion creature. The lion understands Jesus' rule and reign, and he moves in what Jesus will rule and reign over. There are a lot of things being ruled and reigned over right now. Then there is the eagle. That is the prophetic future of the Lord God Almighty. That's what's coming to the earth. And if you're hanging with the eagle, you're seeing what is coming. Jerina and I hang with the eagle a lot. I've taken a ride on him throughout the earth. I just want to share with you, the four living creatures are going to interact with the church. And you might as well get used to that concept. So then... The four living creatures work in tandem with separator angels. We don't quite fathom what separator angels are, but if you're not going out in the rapture, guess what? You're going to live all of Revelation. Let that settle inside of you. 
If you're not going out in the rapture, you get to live all the scriptures you used to think were going to get fulfilled while you were gone. You understand this now? If you're not going out in the rapture, you're going to live through the scriptures defined in Revelation of which we used to think, I'm not here. Well, if we are here, we're going to live through them. And guess what? We're going to be here. That means that instead of us watching the angels right after we leave come down and take a hold of the tares, we're going to see separator angels grab a hold of the tares and remove them out of the body, a thing that the church cannot do. Pastors, leaders, no one except the angels that have given that task can do the task of removing the tares from the wheat. That's the great falling away. Can you hear me now? Are y'all hanging with me? Yeah, that's good. Bless the Lord. This is not a, an easy subject matter today. So I trust you hang with me. Amen? We're going to see judgment from the throne as we have never understood the throne having dominion and rule and reign. What's that going to be like? Well, there are systems that are not God. And the Lord God Almighty is going to judge those systems that are not God, and you're going to see them. You're going to see it. So then, Jerina has been being prepared, I have been being prepared, and we've been doing our best to prepare you to move with the book of the Lord that opens and flows a river of what he wishes that turns to gold, which is holiness. There is a move of holiness that is coming to this earth. Now I want you to imagine for a moment, Father, thank you, Lord. I want you to imagine for a moment what it is like for the move of holiness to drop over Charleston, South Carolina. Now, I've got to take you back a ways. So I want to go back all the way because my brothers and sisters are here this morning, which I love dearly. I want to go back to a certain spot of ground. It's actually the seventh gate in the city, which is uh, beside a tree. And it's actually where slavery auction used to be conducted in this city. I want to give you a truth you might not have ever thought of. There would not have been any person who named the name of Jesus who stood on that auction site about to purchase another human with money and a system that would not have been spoken by Lord Holy Spirit to. Lord Holy Spirit would have spoken to them and he would have told them, don't do this. This is not my will. This is not heaven. Don't do this. If you do this, you will do damage to your family for four generations at least. Do not do this. You will become a reprobate. Do not do this. You will sear your conscience. Don't do this. And I want to tell you that every person that overrode Lord Holy Spirit became a reprobate. We don't like to think of it that way, but that's just the truth of it. So if we think that my blue blood gives me royalty status in Charleston, South Carolina, guess what? You have the works of a reprobate mind having came down four generations at least, dwelling as a battleground for your soul as a servant of the Lord Jesus. Can you understand what I'm saying? This is truth. Truth is something that we've got to get used to because we're not used to hearing it at this level, and we've got to hear it at this level. Amen. It's got to be spoken. But well, when holiness drops over a city, that river turned to gold. God is going to flow in holiness. And when he flows in holiness, no unholy motive can stay off the altar. The altar is going to be filled with people seeking the Lord in the midst of holiness to get rid of all of the unholy motives that are down inside the soul and in the heart. Look at the altars to come. They're going to be filled with people seeking not to get burned up by the fire, but to be liberated by the fire, and the fire is going to be burning. Can you hear what I'm telling you now? I needed to try to explain this, 
No one knows what the future is, including Jerina and I, and yet God the Father visited us for a year and gave us what the future is. This is what you're getting this morning. We know glimpses out of Scripture of what it's going to be like in the midst of the outpouring, which we don't know anything about. That's the best I can describe it. And I'm just like you. I'm going to humble myself before the Lord and hold on for the ride. And I'm doing that now, and that's going to increase. Meanwhile, there are five cleansings that are happening in this thing. First of all, the book over Jarena's head, which is going to be over your head and the poor, is the Word of God. That river is flowing, the Word of God. And that Word is literally the will of God the Father for your life. Because it's the Word. And then there's a flowering, a beauty realm of heaven. And heaven is going to be inviting you to be cleansed and to come up higher. Then there is a place where Jesus is literally allowing those in the vision to be at his feet. And so there's a place where where we have walked is about to get cleansed by the river, the washing of the water of the word, and we're no longer going to be willing to walk in the stuff we've been willing to walk in for a long time. We've done some stuff, and God the Father is going to say that not me is not me anymore. I don't want you to ever do it again. I want you to repent of doing it now, and I want to teach you how to walk in my will. Do it my way. Lean on me. That's coming. Oh, Lord God. Then that river under the throne turns into pure gold. That's the move of holiness. Oh, my. I just I hear the Lord say stop and, and uh, minister in this for a moment. I want you to see the 1800s. Tobacco chewing, pistol toting, preacher of the gospel going to get on his horse and ride circuit and maybe have to defend his life from the Indians who think he's invading their territory and they had a right for the gospel and whether or not he preached the gospel or shot one we don't know I've got Indian blood certainly in Jarena and I know that God is holy and just I'm trying to describe a time when there was no holiness the spirit of holiness had not dropped when Pentecost came to Azusa Street in 1906 in America. It revamped the church that was. That church before had no helper per se. They had no holiness per se. They had doctrines that included all of us in salvation but never taught us how to walk with God. Pentecost came and God showed up in the form of his spirit to baptize us from within and to literally saturate us with himself, to possess us, if you will. And all of a sudden, it was a different game in town. The earth had not seen this for a couple of thousand years, and all of a sudden, there was holiness in meetings. Everything shifted. The way women dressed shifted. The places men and women went to shifted. The prayer times of intercessors shifted because the Lord, Holy Spirit himself, was Lord of the prayer and holiness was being poured out and was changing everything. Amen. Well, holiness is coming, guys. Back to the house. So then, this was the next vision the Lord sent. It took us a couple of days to recover. Jarena's in prayer, and the Lord starts speaking scriptures. I'm just going to read a couple of them. Ephesians 6 and 7, Matthew 10, felt to go to 15, Jeremiah 3, 8, Ezekiel 10, 13, Hebrews 3, 10, and felt to add 11. Now, if you happen to have been there that day, we don't have a clue what those scriptures are. And as we look them up, we find out something. God the Father wants a worthy house. This is what the teachings of those scriptures bring about. We could stop, just do that, and it would take us an hour and a half on that one teaching alone. 
God the Father is after a worthy house in every city. Scripture says when you go into a city, seek out who is worthy and stay there at their home. And it says if they receive you, if they receive the word that is in you, and you to bless them with the peace of God resting upon them as you depart. But listen to what it says next. It says if they do not receive you, then in the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than for that city. Now that worthy house had an ability to sanctify a city and keep that city from judgment. But if the house was not worthy, that city is going to get judged because God visited his house and his house was not worthy. When the Lord God moves in his coming moon, we need to be worthy. We need to humble ourselves before the Lord, cry out to him, seek him night and day. Father, what do you want to change in me? What do you want? Lord, I repent. Repentance is not a one-time thing. Repentance is a sword that is in your belt that you carry with you all the time. How many of us husbands have made it through marriage by only repenting to our wife once? <laughs> you hear what I'm telling you. I don't know how many times yesterday I repented to Jarena. A few. This thing is about humbling yourself before the Lord and hanging. God the Father's got it. We're invited. We are his chosen servants. We are the bond servants of the Lord. If you say yes to his call. Many a call, few are chosen. Barney never thinks of herself as a vessel of the Lord. And yet she prophesied to Jarena immensely without even knowing it just a few days ago. Doesn't even know that she did. We are chosen of the Lord. So now, are you hanging with me? Amen. There are promises throughout all of Scripture and they are going to get fulfilled. And there are promises that God the Father has promised himself. And we don't think of promises that way. We think of, okay, God, you promised me something I wanted. Where's my lollipop? Where's my blessing? But there are promises that God the Father has promised himself. And he's going to have them. The Antichrist is not a willing participant in the end day. Scripture says I'm going to put a hook in his jaw and draw him out. The Lord is going to cause. There's no one in charge of the end day but God the Father. Amen. There's no one in charge of every single detail but the Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' name, by Lord Holy Spirit. Every detail is covered. It's all up under his plan. And the adversary is going to have to one more time check the box of, okay, I thought I was getting one up on you at long last, but I fell into my own pit again. You ever notice that about the adversary? Every time he sets something up, it looks like destruction is at hand, and suddenly God moves, and the Lord takes the adversary and dumps him into his own pit that he set up for you and I. What a marvelous thing to behold. What an awesome thing for God to move that way. And we are going to see the Lord God move after move after move. After. The whole earth is going to know that the Lord God is the Lord God Amen. in the days ahead. Amen. There will not be a single place on the earth that does not know it. This gospel shall be preached in all the earth and then the end shall come. Amen. And there will be people who will choose not to serve the Lord. But they will choose not to serve the Lord based upon a loving evil. Not in not knowing that he is the Lord. They will know he is the Lord. All the signs, all the wonders, all the miracles, the heavens are going to declare it. He's going to put signs and wonders in the skies above all the nations. They're all going to know he is the Lord. It's a marvelous day ahead. No time like it. We're born for this hour. Amen. Oh, Lord, Amen. God. Thank you, Lord. Imagine you and I being created out of heaven's plan, put into our mother's womb and coming into this earth to breathe air at the same time that the greatest outpouring in all the earth is coming. Yes, Lord. 
What a day to be selected to be the Lord's. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Ah, Father. I got to tell you, there is going to be a restoration move of the Lord like you've never seen. Peoples are going to get healed of being bitter. They're going to forgive like never before. In the presence of the Lord, the healing is going to go in so deep. What used to take 25 years to get past is going to happen in a day. The seal of the Lord is going to go over those forgivenesses. The literal dove of heaven is going to say, can I light on you now? You know, when Noah sent that dove out from the ark, it had to have life, had to have life to light on. It could not land on death. Now, the raven could land on something dead and do just fine. There was a lot of dead stuff floating in the water. But the dove had to have life. And God the Father is going to send out the dove once more to all the body. And that dove is going to visit every wounded person, every bitter person, every person who is not forgiven. And the dove is going to say, have you got a place of Jesus that's got life in it long enough for me to light down? I'm going to heal you if you do. That's coming. It's part of the plan of the Lord. It's this little teaching over here over the top. You can't see it. It's March. Instead of it's uh, March the 1st, March the 6th. We're gathering ground. We're going into a month into this thing. February 14th. Now we're at March the 1st. We're about two weeks window. Then there's this truth. The authority of the Lord is coming back to his house. Years ago, as the Lord was training me, God the Father spoke and said, I want you to learn rain. I want you to learn rain. Father, what in the world does that mean? You want to learn rain. But I knew it was my father. I bowed to the task and I knew what he was saying. I said, okay, Father, if this is really you, you're going to have to confirm it. This is the first time God ever spoke to me about this. I said, you're going to have to confirm it. I need for the rainiest place in the earth to have sunshine. And I need for the place that never has rain to have rain. And I need it to happen at the identical same time. And it happened the next day. God the Father sent to Death Valley, USA, rain. And at the same time, uh, 263 days out of 365, it rains on one of the Hawaiian mountaintops. And we had sunshine on the Hawaiian mountaintop and we had rain in Death Valley. All right, Lord, you want to teach me rain? So this particular time is when we are coming in off the road and we're going to meet down at the gate. And we needed the rain not to rain on us while we're at the gate. And we had pastors assembled and about a dozen of us going to show up at the gate. And God the Father had rained all the day long. That was the, that was the, that was the schedule of what was normal. But when we got to the gate and we assembled, after prayer, the rain stopped over us. So I want you to imagine that you're in this little square here and right over there is raining. And right over yonder it's raining, and right over yonder it's raining, back yonder it's raining, but over us it's not raining. The Lord God did that. When we left, it flooded. Everything started in again. There is a place of authority from the throne. Now listen, this is not you moving out in what you think. And this is not you demonstrating God on your turn. No, this is heaven speaks, you obey. Amen. Heaven speaks, you obey. You don't make a move unless you hear the Father, but in that area, you trust the Lord, and it will usually cost you something to move with the Lord that way. Put it this way. How many of us would love to move in miracles? You're going to need one when that time comes. To move in miracles, you've got to have one. It's not optional. If the miracle don't come, you perish. That's what it's like to move in miracles with the Lord. You've got to have one. You've got to need one. 
And then in that need, God's going to show up for a whole while. And then if you stand by faith, he shows up and the miracle takes place. And the natural gets overridden by the supernatural because you trust in the Lord. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Our own understanding is going on the altar in the days ahead. Amen. The church is going to repent of not being the church. What a thing to say. The church of the living God is going to repent of not being the church of the living God. The born-again church is going to repent of not moving in the power of the Lord, not moving in the authority of the Lord, not moving with his glory for his name's sake, and instead doing it our way for our sake. The church is going to repent of all of that. What a marvelous day. So then, where are the houses, judgments, Promises, signs and wonders, forgivenesses. Now I want to share with you something. The body of Christ is going to be plunged into forgiveness so deep, with heaven backing up that forgiveness so wide, that if you don't forgive, you're going to stand before the great white throne and give an account for it. Can you hear what I just said? I'm telling you the truth now. There is going to be a cleansed bride without a spot or a wrinkle that's going to be the bride of the Lord. And they are not going to have bitterness in them. They're not going to have unforgiveness in them. They are going to forgive. And if you don't forgive, oh my friend, how did you come into this wedding chamber without wedding clothes on? I don't want to hear my Lord say that to me. Oh, Lord God. So then, I don't know about y'all, I'm looking forward to meeting the Antichrist. Now, I want you to just think about it. He's alive on the planet. He's going to persecute the church. The Lord God's going to move in the miraculous and protect the church until it is time for us to be martyrs. I'm not going a day ahead of time, and he's not going to have authority given to him to do harm to the church until. So I want to meet him. I want to know who he is, and I want him to know me. I want him to know Jesus is inside of me and I'm not going to give him no quarter. I don't expect no quarter. I'm not going to give him no quarter. I might as well meet him. He's the one that's going to kill me. It don't matter. I like the idea of my Lord being the Lord right in his face. How about you? But you need to prepare in your heart to meet him. To know him. He's going to know you you might as well know him in Jesus' holy name. God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind in Jesus' holy name. So then, you heard the announcement earlier. The Sanhedrin, which does not exist in name and pronouncement and figurehead and literal expression does exist. It is there along with the high priest and we're being invited to worship the Lord. I don't know how Israel's worship is to the Lord. I don't know how the Nicaraguan Indian's worship is to the Lord, but I know what my worship is to the Lord and I'm going to give it to my Lord along with the rest of the world. I can imagine God the Father saying, all right, you who are really worshiping me, I'm going to let you become salt to all the others. You're going to get half of them saved. They're throwing something up to heaven. Teach them how to throw the right stuff up in Jesus' name. So I want to go through one last area. The cleansings of the Lord at the river. This is out of the first. I want to just talk to you about those cleansings. 
When you and I, when we minister to the Lord alone, I could not have ministered this message today if I had the fear of man inside of me. If I was concerned about what you would or would not drop in the offering plate, I could not have ministered this message. When we minister to the Lord alone, The Lord is going to remove man's grip off of the church, and the church is going to belong to the Lord. Amen. Oh, wow. That's a powerful cleansing. When we purpose to be his worthy house in a city. Now, how many of us just hearing this message said, Lord, I must be your worthy house. I've got to be your worthy house. I don't want to be anything less than your worthy house that receives you, whatever you want to say, whatever you want to do, however you want to do it, whatever circumstances you want, I'm yours, Lord. I'm yours. I'm bought with a price. I hear my master speak. My ears pierce. Your voice only will I obey. That's the worthy house. When the Lord has a worthy house who can receive his word for their city, God is going to begin to add growth and maturity in the spirit unparalleled. And he'll make known his will for that city specifically, giving the charge of that city to that worthy house. And I want you to see how powerful that worthy house is. That worthy house, there are lots of, there are lots of movements in the body that set up a type of administrative, uh, I could call it skeleton crew, uh, administrative blueprint. Well, the blueprint of the Lord for the end day is for every city to have a worthy house. And then through that worthy house, he's going to administrate what he's sending from heaven. And they are not going to be competitive they're going to love the rest of the church in the city, but they're going to say to the rest of the church in the city what God the Father is saying from heaven. And there's not going to be the spirit of fear of man. There's not going to be the religious spirit attached to it. There's not going to be the love of money attached to any of it. Whether offering time comes or offense because of what is being spoken in truth, spoken in love, does not matter. That worthy house is going to be the vessel of choice for God the Father is outpouring himself. Get him, Lord. When we submit to the feet of Jesus, and that's what happens. The water cleanses where our feet are going. When we submit our will at the feet of Jesus, now that's an experiential moment. You actually experience that. And what you're saying is, Lord, wherever you have walked out, I'll walk out. Whatever's been proven by you in battle, that's where I want to go. I'll step into that, Lord. Whatever you've done, I'll live that, Lord. That's what the river does. That's what the river imparts. The experiential way of God the Father in Jesus, what he lived on the earth, is then yours. And when that happens... He's going to cleanse us from all the spiritual adulteries that operate in our motives all the time. Get a hold of that now. Because the feet don't go where they want to go anymore. They don't go where flesh wants to go. They don't go where carnality wants to go. They want to go where the throne room will of God wants to go. And to do that, every motive surrenders itself on the altar and gets purified and sanctified and set apart for the Lord and used. Amen. What a day. All of the church in the earth ahead is in for marvelous times from the Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Then, This river flowing over our lives. As a fourth level of cleansing. And now God the Father has some things that he's decided. It's all him now. It's his move. It's tabernacles. Joel's outpouring begins at tabernacles. 
is the long-awaited feast day of tabernacles, which is God the Father's day to dwell. He's coming off of Mount Zion, no longer just going to say the Ten Commandments and everybody gets scared of him and he runs back up the mountain and leaves us alone. No, God the Father is coming to visit this earth. He's going to shake everything that can be shaken. He's going to do it in Jesus' name. He's going to do it by the Lord's Holy Spirit, but he's coming. Amen. What an awesome day ahead. So then, it's him now, and where we go, who we meet, what we do, how we do it, all of it is him in submission. And finally, the fifth one, when we are cleansed in the depths of his holiness, we're not going to go astray in our hearts, we're going to know his ways, we're going to rest in him, we're going to do exploits. Signs, wonders, miracles, automatically as he wills it. Those five cleansings happen out of that vision. So now those are the first thing the Lord sent. There are five cleansings coming to the body of Christ. Now hang with me for a moment. I just want to give you some one-liners and we're done. So let's go back to the first. Trust. What do we trust in? Do we trust in the Lord God? Or do we trust in ourselves? Because whatever we trust in is going to get tested and it's going to be known. We are going to see the four living creatures move. We might not see them personally unless we know how to see in the spirit, unless that's the gift the Lord has put in us. But we're going to see the results of them shifting this earth. And it's never going to be the same. We're going to see the separator angels. There will be tons of other angels. Not all of them are out for separation. Lots of blessings from lots of angels. Oh, my. Irene and I have met the revival angels of many a city that we've been sent to. And they intend to move in Jesus for his name to be established in the great revival of end day souls. And as many as call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh my. The influx of souls. But we're going to see judgments. They're going to come from the throne. And they're going to come to systems that do not trust God. Judgment has to begin at the house of the Lord. And God has to judge the stuff that doesn't trust him. Because it's time for the entire church to trust him. So you've got to judge what doesn't trust him. He's got to do that. Holiness counts. It's not a small thing. It's a real thing. And it counts. There's not going to be a toleration for evil in the house of the Lord. That is going by the wayside. Pastors in adultery are going to drop dead. There's not going to be a tolerance for evil in the house of the Lord. When we're in Baltimore, exploring the city for the gate of Baltimore, we were looking for the Lord God Almighty to show us his angel over the city, the revival angel of Baltimore. We want to know where the gate is. We want to know the rest of the match that's in the city. What spirit, aside from hell, is what every saint has to wrestle all the time, the familiar spirits of that city. And we saw Leviathan out in the water, and he had four humps. So he's putting on a display of what he owns. One of the things that he owned was a pastor in the city, 8,000 member congregation, and the pastor had already had one affair outside of marriage and had a baby by that marriage. Then he had left his own marriage uh, for that. That relationship did not make it. And now he's got a next woman inside the congregation. There's three different women, one of whom is his wife, and by one, a child. And the church never broke sweat about it and never quit coming and never quit surrendering tithes and offerings to the building and the progress, and etc. That is going to cease in God's house. Evil is not going to be tolerated. God the Father is coming. You better fear doing anything that you know is an iniquity in Jesus' holy name. The fear of the Lord is returning to the house.
There is not going to be a spirit of compromise. Pastors who carry forth the spirit of compromise, who cannot move in the true, full word of the Lord, doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness are all part of the word of God. And pastors who refuse to move in the other three are going to have their congregations taken away from them and given to someone who will truly shepherd them. No spirit of compromise. That's coming. So then, there is a love of monies that is deeply entrenched into the American church because one of our gods is money. Another is sports. It's Sunday afternoon, and there are a lot of people watching sports. Now, during the playoffs, I'll be part of them. I'm not against sports. I enjoy them. But I'm simply saying that there is not going to be a love of money that is tolerated in God's house. He's going to wean that out. We're going to love him. To love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's where your love belongs. All to him. A love of money is a root of all evil and it's coming out of this house. The old people in Dalton, friends of ours, were told three things. You don't know about the oil people? The Bible started flowing oil and 100,000 vials of oil have came out of this Bible. It's a 24 hour a day, seven day a week miracle from the Lord. And God the Father spoke three things to them. Number one, give it away. Number two, don't ever charge for it. Number three, if you ever charge for it, I'll lift. Hold on. They put this oil up under a microscope, electron microscope, and their 5% of it is not on the planet, not on the elementary charts. People are drinking it, anointing themselves with it, miracles are breaking out, and ministries are saying, please come on and let's do a 2995 3 CD out and we'll throw the oil in free, since that's what God says. And they said, nope, that's the back door to what God said not to do. We're not going to do that. The love of money is going out of the house of God. There are gates and cities, and God the Father is going to begin to give instructions from these gates. There's a prophetic word from the Lord about two more moves of Pentecost going to England. How many of us want to go to England in both of those moves? Two more moves of Pentecost are going to get poured out over England, and it's ahead. This one's a little difficult to understand, but... If you ever look at the false prophet and the beast, we think those are the heavyweights. They are not the heavyweights. It is the red dragon behind them that is the heavyweight. He is the one that brings them out of the sea and puts them in position. The red dragon is Lucifer. We are not going to have a fear of that red dragon, and we're going to meet him and do battle. We're going to take on that dragon, bond servants. Lord God, get used to the battle that is ahead. It's a war ahead for the earth. We are all going to be introduced to God the Father by his character and his names. We asked the Lord once, how are you going to come? This is just how you're going to at first come. And he said, the Lord said, can do the Lord our righteousness. Said Canu, the Lord our righteousness. The church is about to be introduced to eternal time. God the Father is going to do something and there's no way back. With Ananias and Sapphira, God introduced something no one ever seen and there was no way back. God's going to do a lot of introductions of eternal things with no way back. The church is at long last going to understand standing ground before the throne. I was with the Lord in the spirit and I knew of a scripture that had gotten quoted somewhere and I said to the Lord, I sure would love to know that scripture. God the Father spoke to me and said, I give you that scripture. 
God the Father is going to be giving scriptures out to his beloved, and they are a possession of ours in spirit, and we can live out that scripture just because God the Father gave it. And that scripture that the Lord gave me that day was this. If you will keep my ways, it's out of Zechariah, if you will keep my ways, you perform my service, I will let you govern my house from here, and I will give you access to those who have standing around here. The church is going to begin to come into an understanding of standing ground before the throne. That is the place where if you pray to the Lord and he hears you, it is done in the earth. That's the place of sign and wonder's power right there. So then, if you'll be a worthy house in every city, but you've got to know that the whole earth is in for an inspection from God. The whole earth is about to have an inspection. Saved nations, unsaved nations, saved leaders, unsaved, everything's going to get an inspection from the Lord. God the Father's coming. There's going to be supernatural peace that is going to heal all the little foxes. What you just got is one week's worth of being with the Lord. Now multiply that by a year. Put 50 plus more weeks to that and understand what God the Father has sent and the power that is resident in what he has sent. And when he pours, this is the direction for the church. They're going to have to walk it. They're going to have to live it. I don't understand it fully any more than you and I will ever understand it fully except that the Lord revealed it. But God the Father is already revealing marching orders for an army that doesn't even exist yet. That army is going to come about. Messiah is not going to be small. We'll be lucky if we can stay up under 8,000. I don't know if I want to administrate the church of 8,000. We need some errands to do all of that. Amen. Y'all administrate Marks. Y'all do all the Michaels. Y'all do Norman. Y'all administrate the 8,000. I just want to go hang with the Lord and go do exploits. And then teach the body what the exploit is about. And keep going. So then, the kingdom. People say, what is the kingdom? Well, it's real simple. It's wherever Jesus is king. That's the kingdom. If Jesus is not king, it's not the kingdom. If Jesus is king, it's the kingdom. Wherever the king is, that's the kingdom. Is Jesus king of your life or just savior? Think of it. Is Jesus lord of your life or just savior? Think about it. Wherever Jesus is king, that's the kingdom. And that kingdom is going to begin to take the earth more and more and more. All the doctrines are balanced in the kingdom, by the way. Nothing's amiss, nothing's argumentative, nothing's off chart. All the promises are coming full circle in the end day mood. God the Father has promised Jesus that not one jot, not one tittle, not one iota will fall to the ground until all be fulfilled. The Lord shocked me about a half a year ago, I think is about when he told me. And he said, in essence, I was seeking him about what particular scriptures he was going to fulfill. And he said, all scripture applies in the end day. Whoa. Every scripture alive. That all that Johnny and Leslie and Jerry and Joyce have in Dalton, Georgia, the team that is up there, it started flowing at Psalms 39 and flowed to Psalm 63, went from Psalm 63 all the way to Revelation through the concordance, started back up at Genesis and flowed to Psalm 39, and the entire Bible was saturated with oil and has been producing oil and has literally produced 100,000 bottles of oil and is producing eight gallons of oil, eight new beginnings, eight gallons of oil a week. What is God saying? Every jot, till, and I owe of my word from Genesis to Revelation is anointed by me. You live it and you can have it. Yeah. Get a Lord. So then, you're going to work with the four and living creatures Jerry and I have been with them. They've been in our living room. They've been in prayer times with us, us getting used to them. 
understanding how to work with them. And you're going to see angels of judgment. And they're all going to train us how to keep the breast of God the Father himself in his end day mood. And I did my best to try to cover one week to two weeks of notes from the Lord. I call this way up top off the presentation one tour of heaven down 50 more presentations to come can y'all hang with this whenever I'm up here ministering presentation one oh what God the Father has sent I asked the Lord early on Lord what are you doing I didn't ask him what have you sent he was still so early on I didn't have enough sense to know how to even word it I said, Lord what are you doing and he said, it's mine and it's yours, but it's mine. Oh, get a hold of that. It's mine and it's yours, but it's mine. Now, after a couple of years had gone by, 